Hello everyone, my name is The Ultimate Spy, and welcome to another episode of Reviewed. Reviewed number 171. And today, I'm going to be reviewing the movie, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. So what did I think of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children? I loved it. It was amazing. It, 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 when I first heard about it, because I, I, I saw it in the um, in the theater back when it came out, when it first came out. I don't know if it was the day it came out that I saw it, but it was, uh, it was like the first week at least that I saw it in theaters. And I thought it was like basically X-Men. It, it felt like an X-Men. It, it felt like it was basically like a... Like, ripping off X-Men. I mean, it wasn't, obviously. It was, it's a fantasy film. But at the same time, I thoroughly enjoyed it. it, it it's dark and creepy because it's directed by Tim Burton. And he, he's known for the dark and creepy movies that he, he's made in the past. And that's what makes the tone of, the, of these kind of movies dark. And, uh, and he also tends to work a lot with Evergreen, who in this film portrayed Miss Peregrine. And in, in, uh, in real life, Evergreen is actually a French actress but because the home is set in Wales, which is in the UK, she speaks with a British accent. I will say Evergreen as an actress is amazing. She is phenomenal. I mean, not only is she very beautiful, but also she is just amazing with, with her uh, with her character. And in general, I thought this movie was well casted. It, uh, it had a lot of famous actors from around the world that uh, played different characters in this movie. There was Asa Butterfield, who actually spoke with an American accent. I mean, a decent one at that. And then you have Chris O'Dowd, who's Irish, who spoke with a terrible American accent. Oh, it's just, he doesn't sound American enough. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like a thick American accent. It just, it's not very good. It's clear that he's very Irish, but at the same time, he cannot pull off a very good American accent. It just, he can't do it. But also they had a uh, Judy Dench, which is a surprise. And then also Terrence Stamp, and interestingly enough, there was a moment in the movie that had a, a young Abe, the character that Terrence Stamp plays, who's a grandpa. And it looks as though it's like a de-aged version of Terrence Stamp. I don't know. I couldn't tell. It might have been a different actor, but it, it has the same voice and everything. Um, also, Samuel Jackson was in it. He played the primary antagonist, Mr. Barron, who was the, the Holocaust. And my goodness, because it was directed by Tim Burton, it's going to be terrifyingly creepy at some points. I mean, it's not like a horror movie, but... Uh, there are some dark elements and very, very terrifying elements to this movie that really make you go, oh my god, this is going to give me like nightmares. It isn't that. Um, it, it's a funny film, but like it's set in Wales. The idea of the home where the peculiars are is that they're in a time loop because they want to like, it's kind of it's kind of like, compare the, the home with uh, something like Hogwarts. Or they're out someplace in the UK and somewhere in Britain and no one knows really about them. Muggles are, you know, not aware of who was kind of same kind of thing with this one where they they have a time loop where they're always living on the day of September third, nineteen forty three, and then when they when they reset the loop, they go back to nine p.m. on the second, and then obviously the following day is the third again. So basically, that's a time loop because they want to protect themselves from the outside world because well, mainly because of the Holocaust or the Hollows, they're out to, to um, basically eat eyes and, and you know. Kill essentially. It's terrible. But the reason why they do this is because they originally the home bomb. The last little stretch of World War II happened and the Germans ended up bombing them accidentally. I don't even know if it was accidental. But they bombed them and uh, and because of that, it's gone. At least in the future. But they preserved it. They preserved that, that one day. That's why Mr. Peregrine always, always guides the peculiars to make sure that, uh, that they always were in the same loop. The same in 1943 every day. That's forever, basically, and that's basically what's going on with with, uh, with the timeline. Is that's why they why they never age. And as for the killers, and I I I, I talked about this at the beginning of this review. The fact that I thought this movie was basically X Men. It's not X Men. It has a similar idea. I mean, not the same, but it's it's. I can get why I would think that because of the powers of the of the paranormal abilities, as they call them. Um, peculiarity. Some of them actually have, you know, actual, like, powers. Emma, this very beautiful girl with blonde hair, um, it's her eyes that really give her away of, of how she, beautiful she is. She is gorgeous. 
she has the ability to float. Um, and, and she has to wear the special boots we have led that prevent her from floating away because if, if, if he doesn't wear them, she floats away. But she also has, has the power to manipulate the air, air, giving, obviously giving um, Jake an air bubble, but also be able to manipulate the air. She can get air. I mean, I mean, she needs to. She can use the air molecules to breathe or something like that. That's how, how she works. And, you know, she's very beautiful. Like I said before, she has this beautiful dress and just in general, she's gorgeous. You know, blonde hair. And the, the fact that you can tell that it's 1943 is because her hair. Her hair is wavy like. It's kind of the idea of 1943. And also the scene when, when, uh, when Jay goes back to the hotel he thinks he's in. Everyone looks like they're from 1943, which is true. You know, they were whales in 1943. That's why they don't, they don't look like that. And then, so that's Emma, and then, and then all of another very beautiful girl with, with orange hair, absolutely gorgeous. She has the power to manipulate fire. She can control fire. She can, she basically like Pyro from X Men too, and she can basically set things, she can set things on fire. She can all, all this stuff. And similar to Emma, she wears special black gloves that will they they make it possible she won't burn be able to burn anything, and she is amazing. I really like her character. She's just fantastic. And then also there's Millard, who is basically a, a, a visible boy. It's not much of an ability. It's just like he can't really be seen. So I guess it's not an ability. Like you don't really can see. That's why you. That's why he wears you know clothes and they look like they're from the forties in the UK. And I mean, I guess it's, it's useful because when he you know when he strips AK, which is so silly, he can you know be undetected, which is actually super helpful. And then there's Ronin, I think that's her name. I can't remember all of them. She has the power to. Actually, there's there's a little backstory. Victor actually died by one of the hollows, and he seems terrifying, by the way. He also has the same power as her, where she can lift things. She can, like, lift 10 times her weight or like that. That's, that's why she's able to do this, uh, this giant carrot. And then also, also th thanks to um, the girl with the pot manipulation, Fiona, I believe her name is. She can like manipulate plants, basically. She's the one with the birdie pigtails, and you know there's a scene where she does. She's able to you know manipulate plants and any plant life, and then you got a giant carrot, and then uh, and then Bronin, or her the the girl that can the girl with super strength. She can the giant carrot. That's actually a pretty silly scene. It's like oh, it's a giant carrot. That's crazy. And then there's Hugh. Hugh is the one who has bees living inside, and and it's basically just he he can use them to attack, and it's just like a an interesting thing. He's also played by the same actor, Milo Parker. He, he played the uh, kid in Mr. Holmes, that movie that I reviewed a while back with uh, Ian McCallan as Sherlock Holmes. Then there's Horace, who is the well-groomed and well-dressed British kid who basically he can foresee things. He, he can uh, he's able to you know, show his dream, basically, which is very, very interesting. Mainly that clothes, but, uh, but also you know, seeing future events, which is very cool. And then there's um, Enoch, who has the ability to basically reanimate the dead, essentially. At one point, he was able to re you know, reanimate a robotic elephant, which is really cool. He isn't, like, amazing and special, but he, he can reanimate the dead, which is pretty cool. You know? that's, that's a neat thing. And then, there's, uh, and then there's the girl with the curly hair that has an extra mouth behind. I guess she doesn't eat with her mouth. She eats with her, with her sharp mouth. Terrifying. I can't remember her name. I don't know why. I just, I just can't. And then there's the twins. The twins basically, they're basically like Medusa. They, they, you know, they peel the mask back. They're terrifying. And then they, they can make, basically make some, someone free, essentially. And that's what they'll do. So that's basically all of them. Basically all of the killers. And of course, uh, Jake, who isn't a peculiar at first, realizes he can, he can actually see the, see the giant monsters. The giant monsters are terrifying. I mean, it's a Tim Burton film. It's meant to be kind of creepy and dark and everything like that. I mean, you have these people who are literally um, taking kids' eyes and eating them. That's just it's disgusting. I mean, ugh. Also, in, in general, the, the visual effects are terrifying. I mean, from Victor, who is dead in the night, and then being reanimated to, to, like, you know, speak without teeth. It's just, it's terrifying. I mean, no eyes. It's just, like, especially, especially at the very end when, uh, when Samuel Jackson's character, when his, his eyes are taken out, terrifying. That's absolutely terrifying. I mean, it isn't like nightmare feel, but it definitely can give you the the heebie -jeebie. It's just like it's, it's ugh. so that, that that's basically the, all the killers. It made me think of X Men when I first heard about it. Like, oh, it's X Men, basically. Not exactly, but you know, you get the idea. You, you kind of get the uh, of uh, the idea of you know what kind of story it's telling about people who are uh, with you know these abilities, these uh, 
these unnatural abilities. But yeah, I really enjoyed this film as a whole. It was, it was well made. I never read the book. I never read the book. I just never did. I, I didn't know there was a book currently. It's kind of like a lot of movies that I watch where I don't realize it's actually based on the book until after the end. It's like, oh, I like based on the book. Who knows? I didn't know that. Yeah, this movie was based on the book. I, I, I don't know. I might not read it after all. I don't know if it's really a point. I, I kind of like to read. If I realize that there's that a movie based on the book after I watch the movie, it kind of defeats the purpose of, of reading the book. Although it kind of be, can be a different situation depending on on, uh, on the movie, depending on, on if the book's better than the movie. Sometimes it is, not all the time. It really does depend. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this film. It was it was fantastic. I didn't really have any issues with it. One thing that I noticed about this movie was definitely. Uh, the, the cameo. There's, there's a Tim Burton cameo. I mean, I don't think he's ever cameoed in movies before. I mean, it's not like, you know, Peter Jackson where he cameos in like, every movie he makes, but, but this one was another like, carnival thing, you know, the, all the, the fair thing they had, and then you have Skeleton, who is, among others, being reanimated by Enoch, you know, slammed into a into um, one of the rides, and you have Tim Burton as well. Oh, not like that. But Tim Burton is in this film. He's makes a cameo. It's pretty obvious who he is right there. And yeah, just that was that was a really really cool um, thing. And in general, I, I really liked the story of this. It was disturbingly creepy. It's horrifying as hell, but it kind of towards towards like the the, the, the final climax where you have a you have the Batman killers and the Gripper killers like kind of fighting you know each other. It's really really fascinating. One thing I will say though about the the Batman killers is they are terrifying. You know, their eyes. Especially Samuel Jackson Mr. Bear. He is terrifying. It his sharp teeth and the obviously the, the white eyes it is oh my god, he has just this giant knife. It's just like oh it's it's horrifying. I just did not like that. He, he was evil. I mean in general all of them have that same effect. Like all of them have white eyes and they they're just like it feels like they're ghosts or something. It feels like they're just like they're haunted or something. It's just it's it kind of feels like something out of a haunted mansion. It's just like, oh my god, it's really icky. I don't like that. But one thing I noticed about the relationships in this movie were the relationship that Shelley and Jake have. Shelley doesn't get a lot of screen time, unfortunately, but at the same time, it's always nice to see the thing with these movies where the, the boss and the employee, I don't know, have a good relationship. Because, like, this movie showed um, a supervisor, a boss, and Jake, you know, kind of getting along, they like they know each other super well. It's always cool and great to see that. I just I love seeing that kind of thing, that that dynamic, that relationship. And then you also have a very special relationship between Jake and Abe, because when um, Jake answers the call, they realize he's actually a young Abe. It's like he doesn't realize that this is a chance to like you know tell him how much this is because I mean, it's, it's young age it's just it's just amazing so those are um two really amazing dynamic relationships that i thought were really amazing it was just so wonderful i really enjoyed that and that's for the ending the ending was amazing you know it kind of because early in the movie it's revealed that emma swore for romance ages ago because abe left basically and they didn't have romance and so i feel like with this one jake had to prove himself to be worthy of emma it's like Kind of thing. You have this 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 beautiful girl, this beautiful British girl. There's a trouble in the past with with with, uh, with romance, and then you have Jake who wants to be with her, and then he basically goes to all these lengths to to be with her by you know by doing all these loops, and then eventually going to the Navy, and it's just like it's the, the, the amount of effort he actually goes. You know, of course, she's gonna, she's gonna fall in love. I, mean, I kind of feel like they had some good chemistry in the first place. You know, a little bit awkward, but at the same time, pretty amazing because. You know, you can kind of see how he looks at her. You know, he's this very beautiful girl. And of course, you look at all of them. You know, she she has the same looks for him. It's just like it's just amazing. So yeah. Now, the one character I didn't realize was actually like a shapeshifter is actually Mr. Baron. Now, Mr. Baron, yeah, he was a shapeshifter. He was a pretending to be a lot of people. He was pretending to be uh, the bird watcher guy and then psychiatrist. And I like you would never have known that in the first place if you hadn't seen that reveal like it's just amazing and yeah of course Samuel Jackson does a great job as Mr. Baron he's, he's fantastic although one thing I, I noticed about the clothes that they're wearing is they kind of all look like they're from the 1800s I don't know if that's just me but it, it looks like that I mean the transformation is, is also terrifying too that is just like oh my god I mean 
one watching a Tim Burton film, understand it's gonna be a bit dark. Especially if it's, a, if it's a live action film, it's gonna be dark. It's just gonna be like creepy and terrifying and like, ugh. Just, no. Sometimes it's hard to just translate a book to movies. I mean, I never read the books. I don't know how different it is, but, uh, I, I just, I have a strong interest in these kind of, you know, stories about people with, with abilities. People with powers, essentially. Um, you know, paranormal powers. It's just, it's just, I love it. It's just, it's fantastic. Because it kind of, I don't know, it's like, it's like X-Men or, it's, it's basically, the way I put it, it was basically like, X-Men meets Harry Potter because all of the characters, at least from the home, are all British. I mean, it is Wales, so it's from it's all the UK, so people have have that accent. I mean, you know, Wales is they have a, a different accent than uh, you know the rest of Britain, but they're you know still UK, so it kind of has the same effect. One thing about this movie before I wrap up here was the time loop reset thing. I I didn't. I mean, I understood why they did it, but at the same time, they were wearing gas masks. Why do they need to wear gas masks? It makes no sense. I mean, it was a very cool idea to have it in there. I mean, those are you know, also cool to have, you know, some, some like, horror predict, predicting the future, like, showing, you know, all the stuff that actually happened, you know, and actually that all usually comes true. But the time reset, it was very strange. It didn't make any sense. Like, why did they wear gas masks? There's some gas. I mean, I guess, you know, that's World, World War Two, but at the same time, it's like, what's the point? That's all I'm going to say about Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. There's not much to look at, that's all I can say. I just really enjoyed it and I really loved it. It's really, it's entertaining. It's really entertaining. I just, I really, I don't know my favorite part really. I, I, I didn't really have a favorite part. I thought the ending was really good though. Yeah, I, thought the, I think the ending was a really good part. You know, it's just having the effort that uh, that Jake Do that knows to actually do that is just incredible. It's, it's really quite wonderful. So that's going to do it for this episode of Overview. I'm going to give this movie a 10 out of 10. I really had no issues with it. But all I can say is that the characters of Miss Peregrine, Emma, and Olive, all very beautiful. Especially Emma. My goodness. Gorgeous. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Reviewed. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. I really appreciate it. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe. For more episodes of this series and other series that I do as well as movie content, also make sure to click that bell to enable alerts to know when I uploads, and I'll be back next week with another episode. Alright? See ya.